Roll up your sleeves to supersize your business. Sharon Harnell here, and our idiom today is to roll up your sleeves. Now, I didn't find the exact origin of this particular idiom or expression. I suppose as long as people have had sleeves and they've had to push them up or roll them up to complete a task or do a job or dig into doing some work, they have said, roll up your sleeves. I know I have used this idiom and this expression a lot, both in my corporate career, in my business life, in leading different organizations, in my home life. Kids, roll up your sleeves. At family occasions, at family gatherings, I would say, hey, let's all roll up our sleeves and get this dinner on the table, or let's, you know, roll up our sleeves and clear the table and do dishes, etc. So I was trying to think about this and, and how does this apply to growing and building and supersizing our business? And I think there's a direct correlation between our willingness to get to work, roll up our sleeves, jump in and do what we need to do to make our business grow and supersize, as well as it also means we'll roll up our sleeves. You know, guys will roll up their sleeves when they're going to get in a fist of copper fight. So if we're going to fight for the success of our business. We're going to make sure we do whatever it takes in order to grow and supersize our business. So I looked up 13 secrets to growing and building our business, 13 secrets to be successful as you're growing and building and supersizing your business. And I guess they're not very secret because I think I've heard of all of them and probably done all of them uh, over the life of my long career building and growing different businesses. But let's look at them anyway, because I think reviewing lists like this is really good for me and probably for all of us because it reminds us of things that we might be overlooking or just that we used to do that we're not doing anymore. So number one, hire the right people. Boy, have I got experience with this. That also applies to deciding who you join forces with or partner with or do joint ventures with or do summits with if you're in the online world, etc. cetera, uh, whose podcasts you appear on or radio or television shows. It matters as you're growing and building and supersizing your business, if it matters to you. Number two, focus on established revenue streams. I know I've talked about this one a lot so often, and I'm guilty of this as well is why I, I like the reminder. Sometimes we'll do something and it works out really, really well, and then we never do it again. You know, I've, I've done some online, I did an online summit that was super successful, and then I haven't done another online summit since. I mean, and I could make excuses like COVID happened and everything. The COVID would have been the perfect time to do an online summit. So that's like everything else, just an excuse. But make sure you focus on existing revenue streams and expand them. You know, uh, Holly, not Holly. Well, Hollywood takes their movies on the road. They create a movie and then they show it all over the world. But Broadway takes a show on the road. Comedians take their show on the road. They figure out what works and then they go to other places and share that. We can do the same thing with our businesses. We find an audience that we're serving and that our products and services help them solve problems for. And then we take the show on the road either to different geographic areas or to different groups of people that could also use our products and services. Number three, Reduce your risks. This means, you know, have insurance, things like that, that reduce your risk of different possible calamities. You know, I don't think anybody thought of the COVID pandemic prior to the COVID pandemic happening unless they had a reason to think of that. And I don't know, maybe there's pandemic insurance now, but we want to have the right type of insurance to protect our business as we grow and supersize and scale it. Because as soon as you think something could never happen, that's usually when it does. Uh, I thought it was interesting too that the three most common challenges for small businesses with respect to risks and the necessity of risks are theft of employee information, uh, theft of product design, and theft of customer information, right? Which all three make sense. And there are insurance policies and umbrella policies and things that you can get to protect your business against those type of losses. Uh, number four, be adaptable, be flexible, be adaptable, change as things change. Number five, focus on your customers. Boy, is this an important one. And focus on your customer's experience with your organization. I've had a bunch of different customer service from, uh, uh, what are they called? Ne I guess necessities, trash. I'm thinking of trash. I didn't want to, to call out names, but have had a lot of trouble with our new trash removal service and their customer service is abysmal you get on one of those phone chains and it just goes round and round and it hangs up on you even if you push the right buttons it still hangs up on you which is super frustrating if i'm having a frustrating customer experience how happy am i am with that 
business, even if they were awesome and never made a mistake. If I had that kind of an experience, it leaves a bad taste in our mouth. So we want to make sure we're paying attention to all of our customers' interaction with our organization and different parts of our organization. Uh, number six, invest in yourself. I think I've said this before as well. Number seven, uh, you are always your best investment because our businesses will not grow any faster than we will allow them to. It's hard to admit we're the bottleneck sometimes, but we almost always are until our business gets big enough that we have boards of directors and things. And then sometimes we're still our bottleneck and we get kicked out of our own companies. Never happened to me, by the way. Number eight, boost your customer service. I don't need to say any more about that because we all know one of the best ways to get a competitive advantage in today's market or any market is to treat your customers well and provide them with a great experience. And if there's a problem, handle it properly, right? Fess up, fix it. It's not that hard to fix it. Usually it's it's a super as simple as pressing a button on a computer or sending a refund check. I mean, it's not that hard. Number nine, focus on social media. It'd be nice to say, okay, social media is just a fad. But the truth is nowadays, if you don't have an online presence, you're probably going to struggle more than you have to because it's so easy to have a social media presence. Uh, number 10, attend networking events. Make sure you're part of getting your company out there. It doesn't have to be you personally, but make sure your company is a part of especially local networking events, which leads to the next one, uh, host local events. And it might be events for, for causes that you want to support or just participating in them, but make sure that you're out there and people know who you are and what you stand for. And then 13, which I think should probably be number one, is research the competition. Know what's going on in your environment, both inside and outside your industry, both direct and indirect competition, because nowadays everybody's vying for attention, right? And that is probably the greatest asset we have if, if we have the ability to get and serve our customers, the people that we want to serve and work with. Love to know your experience with this particular idiom. Roll up your sleeves. Get to work. I, it's a biggie in my life. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.